The friends had opened the strong box to find it full of cheap jewelry. Atop the pile, a telltale earring, different from the rest in that it wasn't covered in rust nor other such signs of wear. Tess interrogated Drea Blackstrand, the owner of the box, but determined that she was unjustly accused. Finding themselves after a stale lead, the party retired to the bar for the evening. Misku gambled away the evening in an arm wrestling contest with Kildrak as the others discussed what would happen next in their ongoing hunt for the thief on board. Welcome back to New Delancia, our Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition campaign. I'm your host and most gracious DM, VG Punks. I almost said Commander VG Punks again. I keep doing that. It's force of habit. Either way, we're going to go ahead and get started. Whoops, that is not the right map. Let me just go ahead and... <laughs> ah, there we go. Probably also on that. Everybody should be loading in. Right, let me know when you guys have everything loaded up. Looks like you guys are... Bark, bark, bark. Some music going. And last time when we left off, we were all kind of just chilling at the bar. Um, this uh, wonderful little bar that's below deck. Misku, you're still kind of engaged in this, um, in this contest of strength with Kildrak. And the rest of you have been discussing the, uh, well, the case with Balfalin here. So, if I remember correctly, we were actually in a drinking contest. Was it a drinking contest? I th yeah, I think this is a rematch. I have it, I have, um, in my notes that y'all were, y'all had, like, you were drinking, and then you started an arm wrestling competition. Oh, Okay. All right. Well, either way, I mean, I, I I guess it could kind of go either way, whatever you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, the um, I know it's been a couple weeks, and uh, you guys had just, you know, figured out that uh, uh, well, that it seems that Drea Blackstrand had been set up the entire time. Uh, after you interrogated her, um. You know, she kind of broke down into tears, and um, but it was pretty obvious that she was telling the truth about the whole thing, because why would she steal from um, Bogram? So the thief is still afoot. And, uh, you know, there, there are the obvious other things that are going on board. Can you refresh our memory who all else is in the room with us? Uh, sure. So, let me see. So, you know, all of the peeps at the bar right now, and Misku, who's sitting at the tables over there, across from Misku, um, can I ping? Is that a thing I can do? That's, an, I guess that's not a thing. Yeah, I can't ping the map, but I can draw on it. Um, so here we have Kildrak, and then, uh, sitting next to Kildrak is Holly. It's, uh, right here. Uh, across from Holly is a um, very stout and uh, very um, very muscle-bound Turid Rock Harvest uh, dwarf. Whoops, I don't want to delete everything. Just the ones that... Uh, right across from Turid uh, to the north is Valene Holdrill, and sitting next to Valene is uh, Adam Leerstrom. Just other crew members. Other crew members. And ones that you may have had passing interactions with, and uh, perhaps not. It can vary. It's a big ship. All good. Any questions about anybody? Are they... Are They're all just drinking and talking? Sure. Except for Ad Adam. Adam seems to kind of to themselves um, they've uh, they've always struck you as being kind of a spacey person 
always kind of staring at the floor or um, just zoned out. I think I remember last time that uh, I went around the room and did the sniff test on everyone to try and see if I could match the weird smell I picked up on the key and nobody matched it. Is that right? Yeah, nobody seems to have matched it at current. No one smelled no. like beef. <laughs> Beefy boys. No, okay, then Yolanthe is still sulking in the, cor in the little section that she's at right now. Just kind of like... <sighs> To test the uh, the pupper is is planted on the floor next to you. Uh, Tess is still kind of digging into her um, her order of mashed potatoes with ale on the side. So she looks down at the pupper and says, "Tess is sorry. She cannot share her mashed potatoes with you, puppy." And then, <laughs> and then she uh, Tess looks back at her plate and, and she's obviously quite a bit deep in thought while she's uh, eating her mashed potatoes and sipping on her ale this I must say is one of the more intelligent animals I have ever encountered Val looks over at you, Yolanthe, questioningly. And strange that it seems to have the same eye set up as the cat that we were suspicious of. You noticed that too, then? Hard not to notice. It's so striking. Indeed. But perhaps a coincidence. You notice that as Val kind of turns back to the bar to um, well, pretend, he kind of keeps an eye on you, Yolanthe, kind of side-eyeing you. Tess is going to turn around and see how the competition um, between Miskew and this, uh, this one dude is going. How's that going over there across the room? Well, Kildrak, once again... Sort of leans across the bar and places his hand uh, places his hand across and nods at you, Miskew. He uh, he looks pretty inebriated. He's got a uh, his cheeks are rosy and and he's sweating. And he says, um, "I'm sure you." You want to lose some of that money so you don't have to carry all of that around. <laughs> Miskew, without saying anything, just puts her, uh, holds her shoulder, begins rotating it to stretch, makes some big circles, and just slams her elbow on the table and looks him straight in the eyes, just nodding at him. Turid, sitting next to you, claps her hands. She's obviously enjoying herself. Big, wide smile across her face. Ooh! Contest of strength. <laughs> she says with the uh, deep, um, kind of dwarven um, accent that she has. I probably didn't portray it very well that time. <laughs> Tess kind of leans over the bar and says, you know, Tess really does think they made this game up just so that people could feel more comfortable holding hands. I never thought about it that way. Go, Misku! Woo! And she kind of swings her, her ale around, just completely abandoning that thought. Are you going to go ahead and engage with them? Yeah. All right, go ahead and roll a strength check. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. Well. 
So it's a very, very close competition. The two of you are, are, are locked into this arm wrestling competition and you, um, you, you the, everything kind of stays evenly matched for a very long time until finally you start to gain an edge on it. <laughs> you start to press his arm closer and closer to the table and you see the sweat just beating on his forehead. We'll do another strength check. It'll be the uh, the best of three. Go ahead and roll. Oh! 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 Is that a... Oh, that was another six. Why was that another six? Yeah, okay. I think the the one was a four and the other was a one. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm seeing that now. The the plus is a or the, the cross is a one. Yeah. Well, um after a while, um you uh, start to give in to your inebriation and he sort of just um kind of slams your arm against the table, laughing. <laughs> I'll be taking that. And he scoops up all that uh, the it's around three gold, I think, that's on the table. Do you, do you remember how much that was? I thought I had documented it, but I think I've lost it in my notes here. I think it was three gold. Yeah, it was three gold. So, this is about three gold on the table, and he kind of shuffles it over to himself. So, do you care to place another wager? I'll put in three gold. And he, like, pushes the gold back into the center of the table. And, so, oh, what the hell? Here's another, and he, like, opens up his coin purse. And he pulls out, like, you, you kind of see him, like, scoop everything that he can out of there. There's one silver and he places it on the table, so it's three gold and one silver. Um. Hmm. Yeah, Miska won't back down. She'll she'll just straight throw down four gold. Ooh, four gold. So it's a total of seven gold and one silver that's on the table. Oh, that's quite a sum of money there. They must be paying you a lot better than me. But you lot have to do the hard work, which is unfortunate, seeing as you can't even beat a drunken dwarf in an arm wrestling contest. <laughs> Excuse us. <laughs> straight ignoring what he's saying while he's talking she's already slammed her elbow down on the table <laughs> and is sitting there with her hand like shaking ready to go he like he he does the monster hunter thing where he like whirls his arm around three times and then <laughs> slams it on the table <laughs> <laughs> go ahead and roll another strength check Ooh, he's rolling Higher tonight. Um. All right. At this, Amphir's interest has been piqued at the sound of gold, so he's gonna turn around and watch this contest. All right. All right. So you start uh you start paying attention to the contest. Do you? Uh, are you just gonna kind of like cycle around in your seat? What are you doing? You walking over there? Yeah, I'm gonna just sort of turn around while still at the bar, kind of. Look towards Misku and the other guy. At the beginning, he he immediately um, you know lays down some pressure and he starts pressing your arm toward the table. Um, it's kind of hard to keep up with in your uh, in your in your state after having as many drinks as, as you've had. Go ahead and roll another strength check. You said this is the best out of three. Ooh. He's let you have it again. 
once again, he slams your arm against the table and he goes and scoops all of that gold and up toward him. If I uh, keep this up, I'll be rich. Oh, ah, I, th I think I could use some rest. Uh, moments after getting her hand slammed down, Misku is gonna let out a very exasperated fat and grab her uh, whatever's remaining in her uh, her tankard and just head top side of the ship, kind of storming off. Kildrak actually follows uh, kind of closely behind you. Uh, he kind of keeps his distance though. So the rest of you kind of watch them storm off. Um, Turid there stops clapping and laughing and... Oh, is it already over? Well, you win some, you lose some. You lose some, yes. It's always been pretty obvious to you that she doesn't speak very good common. Yeah. Very doused in her, uh, um, with her accent. She uh, kind of looks around. Who will arm wrestle Turin? Oh, Tess will sit this one out. She has had a long day. Okay, she continues, kind of sipping on her ale. Well, it's been a long day, and sadly a, well, perhaps a productive one, though our lead turned out to be stale, friends. What happens now? Well, Tess has offered to sleep in uh, Gus's room for the night. Tess suspects that maybe somebody who likes Gus and does not like Drea because of how close they are. A little perception check, please. As you talk out of the corner of your eye, you notice um, the drow elf uh, who's sitting at the table just next to Adam is kind of uh, sort of peering at you as you speak. Tess uh, is going to take a mental note about seeing that out of the corner of her eye. Um... And then she's going to shrug and say, but Gus never followed up with Tess, never quite agreed to it, so not quite sure what the plan is, but Tess has an idea. Indeed. Perhaps we should speak about this in private later. Val kind of looks around at the others. Tess is going to look down at the pupper and say, um, and you stick close by, friend. Tess is going to need your help. It is almost as if the dog understands what you're saying. Very strange. Is there anything on these potatoes that would be dangerous for a dog? Hmm. 
hope I've read a book or two about this before. Let's see. I know that garlic is not very good for most animals. But uh, I didn't use any garlic. This is just potato and butter. I think we're okay. Okay, you can have the rest if you want, my friend. And Tess is going to put the plate with the rest of the mashed potatoes down to see if Yolanthe wants it. Yolanthe kind of tilts her head and sniffs at the plate and then takes a big bite and, like, looks up at Tess with a little, like, m mashed potato mustache. <laughs> it's odd to you because normally, you know, you would know what this food would smell like, but really this is the first time that you've been in... in uh, well, this is the first, I, I should say, experience that you've had uh, being in an animal form for this long among other humanoids uh, and having to devour humanoid food. It's almost as though you don't smell the potato at all and you only can smell that animal fat that's uh, in the butter. But it smells delicious. Yolanthe keeps chowing down on the potatoes and then she uh, stands up, like, puts her paws up on the on the bar and, like, barks at Belle for a second. Oh, she might want more. Are you still hungry? She pokes her nose over it at Tess's, um, like, you had a tankard or something, right? Like a glass? <laughs> yeah, I had ale. And she pokes her nose at it and then looks over at Val and wags her tail. You wait. I don't believe that it is okay to give a dog alcohol. Wait, how are you asking me for this? Tess has never had a <laughs> dog before. I mean, I've seen some uh, people who probably could do with not having some of these drinks and... At least in so far as I've seen, this animal seems to be pretty competent. Yolanthe puts her, her chin on the bar and gives Val the puppiest of puppy dog eyes and lets out a little <laughs> roll of persuasion, right? <laughs> roll of persuasion. Nice. Val sighs a long sigh and he pours up a, a small bowl of, of of this ale and sets it down on the table uh, next to you, Tess. If you please. Before I change. Well, here you go, pop bear. And she's going to put the... Uh the ale down, but, like, hold on to it so it doesn't get tipped over. We're committing animal abuse here on <laughs> Noodle Ansia. Yolanthe takes some laps of the, the ale and then goes back to her potato feast. <laughs> There's something very oh special about this dog. Indeed. Should keep our eye on that. She's been a great help in the investigation so far. But Tess feels that she has had enough, ready to retire to quarters for the night. Misku, um, Kildrag kind of stumbles about for a little while before he finally approaches you. Hey, I just wanted you to know that there's no hard feelings and if you'd like, I brought this up, and he kind of uh, turns around, and from a pack that, that he's got with him, he, like, pulls out this little keg. You want one more before the night's done? Help you sleep. Misku, so when he approaches Misku, she's leaning over the railing, just finishing off her tankard. She looks frustrated when he walks up and then sees the alcohol and just closes her eyes, heaves a sigh, and just holds her tankard out towards him. Excellent. She, uh, 
Uh, I mean, he, uh, uh, he, he, uh, turns the tap on the, uh, on the keg and fills up your glass, fills up his own tankard. Friends, then? He holds up his tankard. Misku, uh, gives him a smirk, raises her glass, and says, rivals more like it. Rivals, then. That's fine with me. He toasts your glass and leans back into this ale, just chugging it. And after a time, he pulls the glass down. His mustache is filled with this foam. And he turns and looks toward the, uh, the, the, fore, uh, the forward bow of the ship. And you, um, you see that up there? And he points kind of into the sky where um, as you kind of glance over there there seems to be a large mass of clouds that's forming looks like it might be a rough sleep tonight after all but still the ale should help Misku uh, just downs her ale and looks up at the sky towards the, the clouds and just shrugs. Yes. <laughs> looks like a pretty big storm system brewing. And you're headed right for it. But uh, Misku shrugs and just offhandedly says, well, if it doesn't kill us, we'll all be stronger for it. I wonder if the captain knows. Ah, I'm sure the captain knows. The captain knows everything aboard the ship. That's what the captain does. <laughs> uh. Misku pauses for a second <laughs> at this. Um, maybe it's best we actually let the captain know about this one. Sure, if you think so, friend. I think I don't know. <laughs> Misku is going to not shove by him, but place her hand on him as she, she passes him. <laughs> no uh, sooner than you do that, he like leans over the side of the fucking ship and just... <laughs> <laughs> N don't worry about me, friend. I'll be just fine. <laughs> Not my first, uh, whatever. Misku is going to walk off slightly disgusted. She'll jerk a thumb back towards the direction and shout out to the crew. You guys should take care of your friend. <laughs> One of the other dwarves. Um, dwarf? Yeah, one of the other dwarves kind of walks over <laughs> to assist him. Mesku's gonna head back downstairs. Misku, you're back. How are you feeling? Misku's gonna uh, sloppily peek her head down the stairs and just shout out, Looks like a storm's a ruin. Hmm. A storm, you say? I will... We'll go have a look. Antarius climbs up the stairs. Um, past you. And Misku's gonna flop into a bar stool with her back facing the bar, just leaning against it. It has been a long night. I'll, I'll get cleaned up here. In the meantime, Tess, we should speak more of the uh, the case a little later, perhaps in the morning. Tess will make an effort to meet up with you in the morning. In the meantime, very tired. Going to go sleepy now. Have a good night, everyone. She kind of turns and uh, 
without glancing at anyone else, kind of, uh, walks into this hallway. Hmm. You know, Tessa's never actually slept in the room here before. Have to go find some place. Good night, everyone. Turid also tired. She also proceeds up the stairs behind you, Tess. She makes eye contact with you as, um, as she kind of passes you and, and cracks a wide smile. Tess smiles back and uh, waves. She doesn't want to talk because she remembers that people are trying to sleep in this hallway. <laughs> You're a smart one. She kind of sort of half under her breath, but it still carries pretty far. Tess nods her head and thanks. Oh, good night. Good night. Turd kind of proceeds over to one of the one of the cots and just flops into it with a very it's very loud and <laughs> it's obvious she wasn't terribly careful about the entire endeavor. So Tess is going to, instead of find a room, she's going to kind of slink into this little side hallway here and uh, sit down and, and sit up against the boxes for a, a quick nap. Alrighty. I should also let you all know that if you had... If you had taken a specific room previous, I, I kind of tried to put down some journal notes um, in each um, in each of the quarters to let you know who has reserved those quarters. So, Ian Fear, you have the quarters on the top level of the ship, uh, underneath the aft, uh, underneath the aft castle. Um, if you switch to your journal view, you should see a journal there um, that marks which one is your quarters. Same thing with Serene. Uh, for those of you who haven't taken quarters yet, you're always free to claim quarters on the ship. There should be enough for everybody. Yolanta, you're the one remaining in the uh, bar area. Valphalen is kind of walking back and forth along the bar, cleaning dishes and putting things up. Yolanta has finished her potatoes and she sees Val Phelan walking around cleaning up, and she picks the plate up in her mouth and tries to nudge it onto the counter. Val sort of leans over and and grabs it. Let's create a quick journal entry here. Mark Misku's quarters. Okay, you should now see the journal entry there for that. Each of the quarters uh, tends to contain a bed and sort of a little nightstand that has drawers um, on it that you can, um, uh, in which you can store your belongings. Uh, there, are, there is actually a lock on each of the doors, uh, allowing you to lock your things securely inside. Now, Thalen, uh, after having finished up all the dishes, starts to polish down the bar with a towel. He pauses for a moment to stretch. <sighs> And yawn a very deep yawn. Kind of turns to you, Yolanthe. I suppose I should get some rest myself. You notice the other crew members start to kind of all meander the stairs one at a time.
After a time, Val hops over the bar. He gives you a couple pats on the head, Yolanthe, and... Well, good night, doggo. Mark. And proceeds back to his own quarters. Whoops. Sorry about that. Uh, what do you what do you do in Yolanthe? What's your plan? Everyone is asleep now. You pretty much have free reign of the ship. Yolanthe's going to look around at the empty bar and uh kind of look around at all the doors and she's gonna kind of think to herself like I need to find I need to find what went wrong and so she goes um, she goes up the stairs to where the quarters are and kind of listens and sniffs around to see if she can pick up anything Go ahead and roll a perception check. And since this will be uh, having to do with uh, the your sense of smell, you can go ahead and roll it with advantage. Oh yeah, wow. So you are definitely picking up on the scent of beef. It seems to be leading from the north. What is it? The scent of beef. Beef. She yep. tilt her ears perk up and she starts to follow the scent. Hmm. Cold. Seems Cold? like it's coming from the room there on the right. Yeah, that one. The closer you get to the door, the stronger the scent starts to become. Okay. Is the door locked, or is it able to be opened or nudged open? Uh, it seems to be shut. You're going to need to pull the latch on the door in order to uh, open it up. But doing so may alert some of the people around you who are currently sleeping. They'll have to be nice and quiet about it. I have to roll a stealth. Um... Instead of a stealth check, let's just call it a dexterity check. Since dexterity also kind of has to do with stealth as well. Gotcha. Oh, no. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> you, uh, you kind of jump up to the, uh, toward that door, uh, uh, sort of the door latch, and it is not quiet at all. As soon as you pull this thing, it goes, Ka-chunk! <laughs> And the door like kind of swings open. You see several of the um, several of the sailors behind you uh, awaken and and look directly at you. I immediately flop over on my back and start acting like I'm just scratching my back on the floor. Like I don't know, it wasn't me. The door the door is open, however. You notice that there is a, um, a Bagram, uh, who you can see just through the door, sees the door open, squints his eyes, and goes, Ugh. close the... And, uh. and he, like, turns over in his bed, and he, like, grumbles the entire time. Yolanthe ducks in real quick and tries to, like, scooch the door closed with her foot. One of the sailors, um, this is a female, um, halfling, uh, approaches you. Uh, she's actually just a little bit taller than you are. Oh. Let's see. One more. Ah, okay. You, uh... You, uh, open that door by yourself, then. Uh, 
Hey, you are a smart one, aren't you? Perfect. You, uh, you hungry? I can smell beef smell now, right? It just kind of permeates this room. Doesn't seem to come from anywhere in specific. Okay, well, it's making my mouth water, and Yolandi's tail starts wagging furiously. She kind of looks around really quick. I'm sure we can find something around here for you to eat. She starts to kind of rifle through um, like one of the other beds. And she produces uh, this little sack. Turns around and gives you a little handful of these um, these little strips. They seem to be some kind of meat. All right. Uh, like a beef jerky kind of thing? That's right. Ooh. Yolanthe takes one and happily eats it. She kind of looks around one more time and tucks this back into the uh, into the mattress where it was. <clears throat> Now, let's uh, both pretend that I didn't just do that. Okay? Yulanthi stares. Who is this again? Like, do I do I know their name? Um, you've you've heard her name before. Uh, people call her Holly. Okay, is that their bed, or was it someone else's? You don't know. She seemed when you came in to get up from um, from the other side of the room, though. Okay. Um, Yolanthe's going to start sniffing at the at the bed or at the mattress, like kind of pretending that she's still hungry, looking for jerky, but also trying to pick up to see if she can smell uh, the smell of my, whoever might sleep there. Ollie turns around. No, no, that's enough. You'll wake, the up, you'll wake up the others. Now, be a good doggy and move along, okay? That's a good doggy. She continues to the other side of the room where she lays down in the bed in the southeastern corner. Well, I shouldn't say southeastern because rotation of the boat, but you know. Yolanthe kind of backs out of the room, keeping her eye on the uh, sailor. Uh, on Holly until she sees her go to the bed and then she tries to kind of like slink in to investigate the mattress again. Go ahead and roll a stealth check. Oh no. I don't think you have anything that's going to give you. God damn it. Oof. We need to put those dice in dice jail. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're good for sniffing. They're just not good for stealthing. As you walk back in the room, it seems like everyone is still asleep. Okay. Um, she just kind of keeps creeping forward to see if she can get a sniff of the mattress. Go ahead and roll another perception check with advantage. Nice. Wow. <laughs> See? It, it loves your perception <laughs> checks. It hates your stealth checks. Maybe it's because she's a Malamute. <laughs> I think it's... I only have one level in Rogue. <laughs> as, you, uh, as you kind of investigate the... Uh, bad. It, you, it seems to actually be pretty cleanly made, um, and it doesn't seem as though it has been. Um, well, as far as you can smell, it doesn't seem like anybody else has laid laid here in some time. Um, you definitely get the scent of beef um, coming from the obvious satchel that has been placed back underneath the mattress. And this is the only time so far that I have encountered that smell on the ship. Is that right? That's right. That huh. could mean that that satchel had been elsewhere prior. That could mean that the satchel 
um, may have been on a completely different deck prior or the satchel out of your range essentially is under the bed it's underneath the mattress so um, each of the mattresses is laid uh, sort of on top of a um, like a small uh, what's the word for that like a bed frame um, and it's, it's like a flat bed frame and I'm, there's a kind of room underneath the, each of the mattresses to kind of tuck things can I tell anything else about the satchel? Like what's in it, or if there's anything about it that's particularly noteworthy? Well, you can't you can't see the satchel at current. It's tucked out, tucked securely underneath the mattress. However, um, when Holly had pulled it out and was presenting you with the um, uh, its contents, it seemed to only contain that. Uh, although you couldn't see inside it or anything, but it was very small. I see. Um, Yolanthe's going to back up again out of the room, peek around and see if anybody can see uh, her coming out of the room. Go ahead and roll perception again, this time without advantage. Wait, actually, yeah, this time without advantage. Mm. Doesn't seem like anybody noticed. Okay. Um... Although, Holly... Uh, seems to roll over as you exit the door. Perhaps just stirring in their sleep. Yolanthe's going to kind of stand there outside the door for a moment. She's really, like, not sure what to do with the situation and not sure how to help and she knows that she needs to alert somebody and so she's going to see if she can figure out where Tess is. Okay. Um, you can use your sense of smell for that if you'd like. Just once again roll a perception check with advantage. This would be uh, I don't know if you actually have a tracking I mean you kind of do but the, the, we're hardly like in nature. Uh, with well, the 17, yeah, you can definitely um, pick up on the scent of Hess. It seems to be coming from the north. All right, so she's going to yeah, make her way. Oop. No, no, not in the map room. Seems to be in the hallway here. Oh, oh. Actually, as soon as you, yeah, uh, as soon as you are, you're kind of like sniffing along the ground. Um, and uh, let's see, it, after, um, once you kind of start to investigate this corner, uh, Tess, you feel a wet nose just boop, right up against your face. <laughs> Tess uh, kind of startles awake, and she's like, huh? Oh, hi, puppy. Hey, you hear the... <laughs> <laughs> Are you up exploring the ship? It's very late in the night. Tess is sleepy. Yolanthe kind of pokes at her, uh, but she realizes that Tess can't understand her, and so she's not really sure how to convey the message. And she's not really even entirely sure um, what the message even is, because she actually doesn't have all the information she just has what she thinks might be a clue so she just kind of stands there and wags and like and then just kind of walks off Let's see Let's see try to have... get some sleep little puppy I know it's been very high anxiety lately lately but we will figure this out after a good night's rest Tess is going to pull her, her cloak around herself and, and pull her hood up and kind of curl up against the boxes to try and sleep. In the map room, um, is there, like, what else is on, on the table? Is it just that map? Uh, yes. It, uh, there's a map and there are some, uh, there's probably a set of cartographer's tools laid out. 
Okay. Um, Yolanthe's gonna sit and kind of peek out the door and see if anybody looks like they're coming or if it looks like anybody woke up or noticed her come in. Go ahead and roll a perception check, please. A normal one or? Um, yeah, a normal one. All Actually, right. yeah, um, yeah, we'll make it a normal one. Woo. All right. Looking down the hallway, um, you notice the drow has awakened and is kind of approaching the door from the side. She seems to be um, kind of sneaking into the room at current and before long disappears beyond the doorway. Okay. Um, Yolanthe is going to see this and think, I remember her, and kind of like slink up towards the door, uh, listening real carefully to see if she can hear anything. She's not going to go in the room, though. She's just kind of listening at the door. Go ahead and roll another perception check with advantage. It's a keen hearing. Nice. Those so ones hear, trying to get me. What you hear is the sound of um, paper. There's sort of a, a very, very slight, it's almost undetectable uh, crumple of paper. Uh, and then you hear those very faint footsteps once again approaching the door. What will you do? Um, she's just going to sit outside the door, but going to kind of be like pretending to be scratching a flea, like pretending that she's just preoccupied with that. As the drow elf steps through the door frame, she turns <gasps> surprised. Yolanthe stops, stops scratching her quote unquote flea. And uh, looks up at the drow and wags her tail. Don't do that. Just it. Well. Good night, then, puppy. She sort of side eyes you as she meanders past you and goes back to her bunk. She uh, closes the door behind her as well. Dang it. Hmm. Yolanthe's watching to make sure she goes back to her bunk and then tries to kind of... Uh... She doesn't really want to go back past that that bunk to get back to the um, the room with all the all the other stuff, so she comes over to the stairs instead. Hmm. Okay. What now? Yeah, I, mean, I should probably still be a I'm no longer at the tavern. Hmm. <laughs> a little inappropriate there. <laughs> Some time passes. Everyone seems to be sleeping. And it's not long before you start to hear the sound of distant thunder. That low rumble. It almost shakes the entire ship as you hear it. Reapproaching the bar. I think I went the wrong way. I'm trying to find... So, 
Yelanthi decided that she wants to try and uh, find a way to communicate with Tess. And she figures to do that, she needs to find some paper, some kind of ink or pen or something. And mm -hmm. find a, a quiet place that's very secluded so she can um, write out a message to Tess. The thought does also cross your mind that you could reveal yourself to Tess. Good. It does. So you're looking for paper? She looks around the bar area and doesn't see anything and gets kind of frustrated. And she's like, "This, I don't have time for this. So she goes back up to the hallway. And she kind of creeps down the hallway. She's trying to make sure that she's... Um, not really raising any suspicions so she's just kind of casually strolling like a dog would but like on high alert like high anxiety like did they see me but you're not exactly stealthing not are, you, stealthing. are you trying to be stealth not stealthing just kind of like trying to look very inconspicuous like just just a, just a dog patrolling the ship not hard yeah okay and then she goes over to the, the spot where she found Tess and starts nudging at her with her nose. Once again, you feel the wet nose on your face. Boop. Oh my goodness, puppy. What is it that you need? Tess is not quite sure where puppies go potty on the ship, so she cannot help you. Yolanthe gets uh, Tess's, like, the edge of her cloak in her mouth and tugs a little bit. And then lets it go and just kind of, again real casual walks down the hallway. Hmm. Okay, let us see what this is about. Tess is gonna sleepily get up and quietly try to walk down the hallway. And roll a stealth check. Figure for a dog that might come a little bit more naturally. Oh yeah, you for once quietly down the hallway. For once, Tess is able to quietly tiptoe down the hallway and follow the pupper. Yolanthe sits outside of the door that I think that they went into when they were investigating the metal box and just kind of waits. And once oh. Tess approaches, she gets up and goes over to the door and starts nudging at it and looks up kind of expectantly at Tess. Hmm. Looking for a place to sleep? She opens the door. Beyond the door is an unoccupied quarters, a bed and a um, small end table with a candle. Yelanthi nudges Tess to go inside and then follows in. Shame on whomever left the candle lit without even staying in this room. Yelanthi sits in front of Tess again, and she looks right at her and then looks over at the door, waiting for it to be closed. And then she looks over to Tess again, and then she, um, Tess sees the uh, orange wolf eye glow slightly and a slight green glow at her chest and she um, just kind of morphs from wolf form into Yolanthe form. What the... Uh... Listen very carefully. Something real weird's going on on this ship. Tess is dreaming. Yolanthe? Shh. We have to be very quiet. There's a lot of people that are doing some really weird things, and I don't understand what's going on, and I need your help. Who Who is doing what outside of stealing and leaving secret admirer notes? I don't know. I I thought I had figured it out with that, that lockbox, but that just made things worse, and now I, I'm not sure what to do. Tess is kind of staring dumbfoundedly, like she's still trying to process the fact that this animal was Yolanthe. Yolanthe is like totally oblivious to that. She, 
she's like just going on and on like first there was the note i thought the note was important but it just turned out to be some love letter and then there was the key and it smelled like meat but i couldn't find the smell and then i found the smell but it's still just meat i just i don't understand and she's like pacing slightly as she's talking and then she's looking at tess like do you do you understand what i mean the uh, the meat the the key yes but what do you mean by it's still meat where where did you find the meat oh right um i forget sometimes the rest of you can't never mind anyway when we when we found the key and you had me sniff it when i was still a dog it smelled like beef you know like the 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 stuff they make out of um cows Yes, Tess is familiar. Yeah. Well, I've never smelled that on this ship. There's always, you know, there's been fish, there's been the, 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 and she, she's like snapping her fingers, trying to remember like common tongue words for like basic things. And she's like... The potatoes and vegetables, yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I didn't smell that and I couldn't find it, but then I, I found it, but it's just beef. Where is it? It's in that room with uh, with Bagram and, and Holly, the, the sailor. She gave me some of it, and it was really good, but it doesn't make any sense. Why does a key, a key smell like beef? Hmm. That kind of narrows down the list of possible suspects. Tess never considered looking into Holly. Ooh. But Tess is also very sleepy. Right, I, I forgot. You, you probably, actually sleep, huh? Every now and then, when Tess can, as long as the uh, voice stops talking. The. The, voice. Anyway. So Holly, for for a moment, Tess was thinking it was, the drow that seems to, be, having s strong feelings for Santigas. That that's another thing. I saw her again. She went into that room again. She snuck in there, and I thought I heard paper, but I couldn't get a look. She she closed the door, and she didn't want me to to go in there. Hmm. Both of you, go ahead and roll a perception check. Yolanthe, outside the door, there's a very, very soft thud. There's a soft what? Uh, like a thump. It oh. sounds like something leaned up against the door. Yolanthe reaches over and just like, almost a little bit too hard, like smacks her hand right over Tess's mouth and puts a finger up to her lips. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And, and Tess, uh, Tess shuts up after being surprised by the hand over her mouth. Yolanthe points at the doorway and then, like, puts a hand cupped over to her ear. Tess is gonna lean toward the door and see if she can hear any breathing or anything. Or see if there are any shadows coming from underneath the door to suggest someone standing outside. You're going to look underneath the door? I'm not going to, like, bend over to look underneath the door, but take a look at the lighting coming in underneath the door and see if there's, like, a shadow disruption. Roll a perception check. Do I roll one, too? You can if you'd like. Yeah, it does look like somebody is standing outside. I think Tess is in my way. I can't see. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you can tell as well, Yolanthe. Uh, looking at Yolanthe, Tess is going to reach up toward the doorknob. Just as a, as a warning, a silent warning, in case Yolanthe wants to try and transform to... Uh, to hide her identity. 
Yolanthe looks at Tess, nods her head, and again puts a finger up to her lip, like a, you know, say nothing kind of thing. And then her eye and her little necklace glow again, and she morphs back into her dog shape. Oh, that didn't work. Hold up. There are two Yolanthes. <laughs> it looked like it bounced out of my my token and then bounced back in. There you go. You're back in wolf form. Or well, you're back in dog form. Now. And uh, as quickly as she can, Tess is going to stand up and then open the door. Behind the door is a very shocked looking drow. Hmm. Tess thought so. She cocks her eyebrow at you as you come out, although she looks rather embarrassed that she's been caught. Were you talking to yourself? Oh, yes, absolutely. Tess hears voices, you know. Tess has, has friends in her head. Um, also, there's this, and she's going to reach into her bag and pull out her mother's skull and, like, present it to the drow. Oh, my. Um, this is my mother. Well, that's great. Um. Sorry. Why were you listening to Tessa's conversation? I was more curious about the dog. It just seems interesting to me. How so? It seems very smart. I'm sure you've taken note of that. It has uh, almost otherworldly intelligence. Tess has heard that certain dog breeds are actually very, very smart. This one has definitely been through some training. Must have. I've uh, been curious about it since I saw it um, just the other day. Can I do some kind of investigation check on the drow? To what end? I want to see if there's anything that maybe I can pick up, like a scent or some kind of mannerism I can pick up that might make me understand a little bit better what they have to do with anything. If there is any anything, um, you'll have to be a bit more specific about what you're looking to gain and how you're looking to get it. How you're looking to get the information? Ha, like in the course of the thievery, if there's any like connection I can make via scent, like if she smells, like you know, if she has that same kind of meat smell, or if there's anything else like Bagram smell or anything? Well, to recap, you definitely know that she is has something to do with the letters that have been being left for Santigas. Um, whether she's the one actually composing them or just delivering them is still a bit unclear. Um, you definitely know that she is the one dropping them off, and it could have been that, or it could be that she was doing more of the same this time. Uh, although, not having seen what went on in the room uh, beyond the door, a little hard to tell. Uh, looking at the drow, Tess is going to say, um, Tess does not think we've ever formally met. I'm Tess. What is your name? I am called Valine. Valine? Valine. Uh, V-E-L-E-N-E, -E, if you're not. It's a very beautiful name, Veline. Thank you. She... Her eyes tend to shift back and forth from, um, from the dog. That is a very interesting eye that you have. Why don't you come out here and let me get a closer look? She kind of bends down, pats her knees. Yolanthe kind of, like, pulls your ears back a little bit, but she slinks out of the room and comes over. Yes. 
say that these eyes have almost a... an elven-like quality. Tess is thinking perhaps this dog is mixed with a wolf. Many dogs are. That's a good point. You know, um, you seem to be awake, and I'm awake. Would you like to join me in the tavern for possibly some tea? Very well. She, um, proceeds down the stairs. And Tess is gonna follow along with her, talking about how she could definitely use some tea to help help her re relax. I don't know where I'm going. There we go. There you go. Here, Tess can actually brew it. She's gonna hop over the bar and start getting the water and some... Um, does chamomile tea sound good to you? It might help us both sleep. That does sound delightful. What are you up to, Yolanti? Yolanti's going over to the bunk to see if she can pick up anything. It definitely seems that... Oh, well, go ahead and roll a perception check. Advantage, of course. Is this smell. the most perception checks ever rolled? <laughs> yeah, you're getting a lot of them in. Good one. No doubt. So you can definitely tell that the, um, the center hammock is where... Um, uh, is where Valine likes to sleep. Um, it, uh, it just absolutely reeks of her scent. Um, you, uh, you also get the faint smell of what seems to be a candle. A candle? Uh, perhaps recently put out. Yeah, you know the smell of, like, a candle when you put it out and it has that really... I want to call it like musky, kind of smoky smell. Yeah. You get that. And that's it. That's it. In her head, Yolanthe is just like, can't everything just line up? And then she decides to go down to the tavern to keep an eye on Tess. Hmm. This is very interesting. Would you come in? Tess is brewing, brewing some tea, and Valine has set up at the bar. She yawns. <sighs> I have not stayed up this late in some time, although I don't require much sleep. Forgive me for asking, but Tess has never really met a drow up close before. Do your people just not need a lot of sleep? Oh, no. No, most of us uh, just require a few hours of meditation. Oh, that's fascinating. As with anything, it doesn't go with that. Go for all of my kind. The vast majority. Tess is not sure about other tiefling, but Tess likes to sleep in very short bursts, as opposed to long resting. Multiple naps throughout the day can definitely help. Yeah, I've heard about you and your party. Adventurers, right? Mm-hmm. The heroes of Bunaver, Tess says proudly. Quite a title. I think that you lot are probably the most interesting on the on board. Definitely more so than more so than some of the others. But that Tess is definitely interested in the rest of the crew. All sorts of interesting things happening here. We've got love leathers. We've got thievery. We've got lots of bullying. Bagram is so mean to that Adam character. Ogrim is a nasty sort. 
Have you known Bogram for a long time? No, I only met him for this work. Ah, I see. So not long-time friends. And Tess is going to, uh, you know, at this point, I'm sure the water is warmed up quite a bit, so she's going to pour the hot water into um, the the tea infuser. Mmm, smells delicious. Here, have a, have a smell. She leans over and sniffs the concoction. Ah, you brew a good tea. Tess loves to drink tea at night. And then she's going to um, hop over the bar to sit down next to the lean and wait for the tea to brew and steep. Lean says, is this your first time aboard a ship? It is, actually. Tess has never ridden the waters like this before. You could tell by the way you were a few days ago when we all came on board. It feels weird. It feels like the the ground is constantly shifting under my feet. It was hard to get used to. Oh, well, you get used to it after a time. There's a lot of money to be made out here. How long have you been sailing on the seas? On various merchant ships for some years. Um, I'm going to say probably... Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, many hundreds of years, actually. She's, um, she's a bit older. Um, she has sort of the uh, crow's feet um, next to her eyes, and um, her face kind of... Um, uh, well, you can tell that she's an older drow. Hundreds of years. Tess looks a little shocked because... Uh, well, Tess is very young in comparison... She, um, her eyebrows sort of furl, um, for just a moment, and her, her nostrils widen, but then she... Indeed, I... have been around for many, many years. I've seen the evolution of ships like this. Never one so grand as the one that we're on now. I really lucked out with this job, you see. And the pay is very well. How does your family feel about how often you go sailing on the seas? Surely you must have a partner. <laughs> oh, my family chose to remain behind. I have no partner. Uh, but my parents and my brother are well, back, we'll say near Macardica. They tend to remain in the caves and underground. You see, drow have an insensitivity to light. That's why I took the night shift. Oh, that makes that makes so much sense. Tess apologizes. She's she's never met or interacted with the drow before. In fact, you are the first that Tess has met up close. Thank you for sharing tea with me. And Tess is going to pour out the steeped tea into a couple of mugs for them to drink. You mentioned before not knowing other tea flames. Where are you from? Oh, some community out in the forest. Tess is not very educated on the, the names and geography on the map. All Tess knows is that one day she came across a city, and then kept going from there. Were you from Godbury, or did you come overseas? Oh, no, Tess has never come overseas before. I see. She, uh, sips her tea. <clears throat> this is good tea. Thank you. Thank you. The company is always very nice. The two of you kind of while away the wee hours of the night until finally the tea is gone and Valene, standing from her station at the bar, well, 
I could do with those few hours of peaceful, quiet meditation. It has been entertaining. It has been nice. And Tess stands up, and then she says, Oh, and the lean? Yes. If there's anything that you can share with Tess about this whole thievery and leather situation, please do let me know. Tess would be very appreciative. If I do see anything, you'll be the first to know. Tess appreciates you. She continues up the stairs. I'm looking at Yolanthe, Tess is going to say, so that was the one that you saw go in the room? And then the paper noise? Yolanthe nods her dog kid. Hmm. Tess once suspected her of the thievery, but now Tess is not quite sure. It is time to get some more sleep, though. As you... Um, as you start to turn toward the stairs, Tarius comes down. Ah, you were up late. Thought I heard talking. Oh, yes, I was just enjoying some tea with, um... Beline. She's wonderful company. Ah, uh, yeah, Beline is a good sailor. Well, um, I suppose I should warn you, we are about to head into very rough waters. There's icebergs and floating ice in uh, throughout most of this part of our voyage, and that being the less of our worries, a storm is ahead, and we've no way around it. We'll have to go through. I would recommend that you and the rest of your friends stay below deck. It'll be safe. Oh, we're expecting rough waters. Hmm. Yolanthe ducks her head and tucks her tail and whines. Tess appreciates the warning. Stay safe, Antarius. Have a wonderful night. You too. Tess is going to head toward the map room. Antarius um, goes toward one of the cargo um, rooms, uh, opens it up actually, opens it up and uh, goes inside um, he comes out uh, just a few moments later uh, with two big, big bundles of rope and um, shuts the door with a foot behind him and um, continues back toward the stairs he passes right by you, Yolanthe, and he looks down at you Yeah, Yolanthe starts to follow him. He, uh, with a, with a bit of a smile, he heads back toward the stairs and climbs up above deck. Uh, places the large bundle of rope down near the center of the ship and then climbs up to the aft castle. Yolanthe pauses to sniff at the rope and then keeps following. He places a hand on the shoulder of a uh, of a sailor who has taken the helm. It says, "Go, get some rest. I'll take it from here." The sailor, relieved, goes and proceeds down the steps as Antarius takes the wheel of the ship. He watches the sailor sort of proceeds downstairs. Yolanthe flops down on the floor beside Antarius and just kind of looks up at him. He, uh... His face, um... His face remains very, um, stoic as he stares into the distance, um, ahead of the ship. Often you catch the, the hint that he may be nervous about something, possibly the oncoming storm. It's not very long until... The, let's see if I can make this happen here. Oh, do I not have the ability to do that anymore? Hold on really quick here. I thought I had a way to do that. Fog of War. Wait. 
Wait, hold on. I think I know how to do it. Aha! So before long, the clouds sort of um, gather overhead as the ship heads into the rain. Oop, that should not have happened. Should be nice. Perfect. <laughs> rain starts to fall and pat against the ship lightly at first, but it starts to pick up for a while. The ship starts to rock back and forth um, increasingly more um, more prevalently and uh, the sailors down below start to scramble uh, toward their stations. Your fur is wet now. <laughs> This is pretty much everything else. So, everybody's sleeping at this point, is that right? Tess isn't sleeping yet. She's just heading toward the uh, the map room. Then she's going to go into the trap door. Make sure the mirror is okay, mainly, with the turbulence. Misk has been sitting up in bed smoking the whole time. Misku, you start to hear the sounds of thunder and, and rain beating down on the top of the ship. You can tell just by that that it is starting starting to storm pretty violently outside. You may have also heard the conversation uh, between the three of them, though, albeit very quietly. So you probably know at some point that somebody, Hess and someone else, went into another room nearby. Hess, inside the room here, the mirror slowly and um, kind of forebodingly glows beneath the the uh, cloak that you placed over it previously. That's kind of a, she talks to herself and the mirror and, and says, um, I'll make sure that you're protected. Do not worry. The night passes and the morning comes. Miski, you eventually find yourself sleeping. Everybody go ahead and put in for a long rest. Whoop, who'd we lose? Oh, we lost Miskew. Um, probably, they're probably getting ready for work. Oh, right, okay. Okay. Morning comes. Um, the um, you probably get a full view of this, Yolanthe, but the uh, sun starts to crack over the horizon, um, just below the clouds. But the rain continues to just pour down. Although it is dawn, it's still very dark. Yolanthe, Yolanthe winds a little bit. And Harry is still at the helm, looking very tired. He continues to kind of turn the wheel back and forth as the ship sways and in the wind. Before long, Val Phelan um, appears at the stairs here. Captain. Yes, yes. I'm sure you've noticed. Um, we're in a storm, and, well, it's to say things are, uh, ugh. sorry. I could use you at the helm, frankly. Indeed. 
Well, lucky for me, this is not my first time. Elphalan takes the helm, and Antarius places a hand on his shoulder in passing. Thanks. I'll be in my quarters if you need me. Just ring the bell. Yes, sir. Antarius proceeds down below deck, cracks open the door to his quarters and seeds inside. Ian Fear, what are you up to? You waking up? Probably. As you awaken, you hear the sound of the rain outside, um, kind of showering the uh, the deck and half castle above you. You've uh, definitely gotten the footsteps of Val Phelan walking up the stairs and, and just overhead. Hmm. With that, I think let's go ahead and call it right here. And we'll pick this up next time and continue from right here. Um, I'd like to thank everybody who tuned in and uh, and for staying with us through the past couple of, uh, well, the past few months of sessions. Uh, we will see you all next week. Uh, make sure to keep an eye on the uh, my Twitter, uh, which is on the link down in the down below. Um, just to see if there are any updates. It, it can be pretty challenging sometimes to get all of us here, and if we have too many players that are not available, we'll usually call it off. So be sure to keep uh, an eye on my Twitter uh, for more information on that. Um, and uh, and otherwise, for some other plans that, uh, that I've got brewing. So keep an eye there. Um, otherwise, uh, this is our most gracious DM, VG Pumps, and friends, we're signing off. Keep a song in your heart.